This is Lucy. She's a three-year-old Scottish Terrier. And like all breeds of dogs, they're bred for specific traits. So back in the 1700s, Lucy's ancestors were bred to catch vermin like rats and mice and chase down foxes. And so specific traits were selected for by breeders. And some of those traits include having this nice long, long snout to get down into the burrows or the holes, as well as having increased ability to smell and track them, forward facing ears that kind of cup and collect the sound, as well as a nice sturdy tail to give a tug if the, the dogs get into trouble down in the burrows or the holes. Look at Lucy's family picture, we'd see a lot of similarities um, in those characters, those traits, um, but we'd also see some variation, especially if we looked at the color of um, her brothers and sisters in her litter. Throughout history, we've been intrigued with the variation in traits in different organisms. In humans, of course, with the variation in relatives, close or distant, um, in breeds of dogs, in livestock like horses, just breeding for the strongest and the fastest horses, or even just crops. How do we make corn with the sweetest kernels or the brightest, sweetest toma red tomatoes? So much interest, in fact, has surrounded this topic of how traits are passed from one generation to the next that a whole branch of biology was formed to study it, called genetics, the study of inheritance, or how traits are passed from one generation to the next. Whether we're looking at dog breeds and their traits, or humans and our traits, questions arise. Why do we look like our brothers and sisters? Or why don't we look like some of our siblings, but look like other siblings? To start answering questions about these types of variations, we have to start by looking at the experiments of Gregor Mendel. During the 1850s and 60s, that Mendel spent a lot of time crossing pea plants. He looked for peas with variation in just one trait, like flower color, or pea shape, or pea color, or pod type, and he took those parents with just one variation in trait, and he crossed them with another parent with a different variation of the same trait. And so what he did is he collected data from the offspring over many generations, and was able to come up and identify several patterns of inheritance. Mendel was studying the characters of pea plants. And a character is an individual attribute or physical characteristic of an organism, like um, flower color, or pod shape, or in Lucy's case, that would be coat color. Mendel observed that for any given character, there are different variations for that character. So there can be different colors of flowers or different colors of fur. And he called these different forms of a character traits. So black fur or wheat and fur would be individual traits, just like purple flowers or white flowers are traits. Dale was the first to hypothesize that there's an inheritable particle or molecule that can be passed from parents to offspring that control our traits. We know now that this particle is called a gene, and genes are stored in, our, in the sequence of our DNA. So each individual gene codes for specific traits. So each character we show, so for hair color, eye color, height, those are all controlled by different versions of genes that code for specific traits that we see. Blue eyes, brown hair, being 6'3". Just like we see multiple variations of specific traits, like fur color, black and wheat, and or purple and white flowers, there are also multiple versions for genes leading to these traits. Mendel coined these different versions of traits, alleles, different versions of the same gene. Each individual has two versions of each gene, or two alleles for each gene, that we inherit from our parents. We get one version from our mom and one version from our dad, and it's the combination and the interaction of these alleles that leads to the expression of the physical trait that we see on the outside or that is occurring on the interior of our body. Lucy received two alleles for coat color, one from each of her parents, and those alleles led to the physical trait of wheat and colored fur. Something important to understand about alleles is you can have dominant alleles 
and recessive alleles. And if we assume Mendelian inheritance in coat color in Scottish Terriers, black is the dominant trait or would have the dominant allele, and Wheaton is the recessive trait or would be controlled by a recessive allele. If the individual has two of the same alleles, they're called homozygous, and they can be homozygous dominant, meaning they have two alleles for the dominant trait, so that would be having two alleles for black fur in Scottish Terriers, or they can be homozygous recessive, and they have two alleles for the recessive trait, or wheaton colored fur. An individual happens to inherit two different alleles, so one dominant allele from one parent and a recessive allele from the other parent, this individual is considered heterozygous. And if this trait is controlled by complete dominance, if that individual has one of each allele, the dominant trait would be the trait expressed in the appearance of the organism. To quickly review some of the big ideas we learned from Mendel, characters are specific attributes that can be inherited from their from our parents, like coat color in terriers. Traits are specific versions of a character, so black or wheaton fur color. Each individual has two versions of each gene called alleles, and we get those two versions, one from each of our parents. And interactions between dominant and recessive alleles allow for different expression of traits. Mendel also identified two laws of inheritance the law of segregation, and the law of independent assortment. The law of segregation states that two alleles for a heritable character separate from each other during gamete formation and end up in different gametes. This means that the two alleles for each gene we have end up in separate sperm and egg cells when they're produced. The law of independent assortment states each pair of alleles segregates independently of each other pair of alleles during gamete formation as long as they are in different chromosomes. In other words, alleles for different traits like hair color, eye color, height are inherited separately from each other. Now that we know a little bit about Gregor Mendel and inheritance, we can look back at Lucy's family and start looking at some of those variations we saw. If we look at the fur color of Lucy's litter, we can see that Lucy and her mom and some of her siblings have this light tan fur color called Wheaton, where others are much darker and have either a black or brindle fur color. If we look at the genetics behind Scottish Terrier coat color, we know that black is the dominant trait represented with a big B. Wheaton is recessive, represented with a little b. Lucy has the phenotype Wheaton, so it would have the genotype little b, little b. Lucy's mom is also Wheaton, so it would also be little b, little b. But Lucy's dad has the phenotype of black fur, and so it would be represented with big b, little b. We know Lucy's dad is Big B Little B because he gave one of Lucy's little bees to her. We can use a Punnett square to look at the probability that Lucy's siblings have certain phenotypes or coat colors. So if we cross the black coated dad, Big B Little B, with the Wheaton coated mom, Little B Little B, we see that we have two possible genotypes Big B Little B and Little B Little B, giving us two possible phenotypes black and Wheaton. 50% of the puppies would be expected to be Wheaton, including Lucy, and 50% would be expected to be black. And these predictions match the observed phenotypes when we look at Lucy's litter of three Wheaton puppies and two black puppies. Based on what we know about Mendelian inheritance, we can make some predictions about Lucy's offspring if she were to be bred with different types of males. If she was crossed with a homozygous dominant male, Big B, Big B, 
we'd predict that all of the offspring would be big B, little b, giving 100% of the offspring with black fur with the genotype big B, little b, so there are no Wheaton puppies. Next, if Lucy's little b, little b genotype is crossed with a heterozygous parent, big B, little b, we'd see that two possible genotypes emerge, big B, little b, and little b, little b, giving phenotypes of 50% black, 50% Wheaton. Finally, if Lucy was crossed with another Wheaton dog, the only two genotypes present are little b, little b, providing offspring with only possible genotypes of little b, little b, so all of the offspring would be Wheaton colored with the genotype little b, little b. So wrapping up our introduction to genetics, a couple of really important things to keep in mind. Each of our cells stores DNA in the nucleus, and that DNA is broken into sequences that um, are called genes. And these genes code for traits or specific versions of our characters. So they code for um, having brown hair or blue eye or wheaten hair or black hair. Keeping in mind these alleles or versions of genes can be either dominant or recessive. And if an individual has two of the same alleles, they're homozygous, either dominant or recessive or they can also be heterozygous if they have two different alleles for that trait. As we move forward with our study of genetics, we'll start looking at some more complex inheritance patterns. We'll start to see at a cellular level, how does the DNA lead to having Wheaton or black fur in Scottish Terriers, for instance. And we'll build an understanding of what's happening in the cells of all organisms that leads to them having the diverse variety of traits that we can observe just by looking out at the world, not even taking into account the variation that occurs on the inside of an organism. So with that, we'll wrap up our introduction to inheritance. Lucy, are you ready? Go get it! Come! What a good girl. So depending on how observant you are, you may have noticed throughout the making of this movie, I got my hair cut. So if we think about that change in physical characteristic, that isn't a heritable change. Because just because I got my hair cut doesn't mean that changed my DNA and that's going to impact the genes that I pass on to my offspring. So when we change our physical characteristics by cutting our hair or by dyeing it or painting our fingernails or getting ear piercings, those changes to our physical appearance aren't heritable traits because they aren't changing our DNA. So that isn't going to be passed on to our offspring. Lucy, sit. Good girl. Go get it. Sit. Down. Good girl.